happy Thursday! I hope you guys are having a fantastical, magical, wonderful day. I know I am for the most part, aside from getting sucked back into that evil little trap of going to work out again today, but I did it this morning and I feel fantastic and I'm even back in a hoodie, which makes me feel at home, which is all good gravy because we are gonna have fun today. I for once do not have a computer in front of my face. However, I do have the reason for the video, which is this amazing, fantastical, wonderful book, which is Zach's new book, I Am Haunted, Living Life Through the Dead, which I read in about a day and a half. I could not put it down. I simply put it down to try to get some sleep, which I suffer from horrible insomnia anyway. So this was a great help with that. Because sometimes reading does like zone me out and put me like in my happy place. And how can that beautiful human being on the cover of this book not put any woman in their happy place? Seriously? This is the best eye candy I have ever seen in my entire life. Once again, as I have stated, the only man I will ever leave my husband for in like a skinny minute. So. We have a lot to cover in what I hope to be a short amount of time, so we're going to get right into it because, you know me, my ADD gets a hold of me and then I just take off and I will talk for hours. So, if you are like me, I am a cover to cover book reader. I read every single piece of writing in the book except like the publication information. I am a weirdo, I know. But I do that because I think it helps me like better understand the entire book and you don't miss anything. Which brings us to the first topic of discussion, the thank you notes at the beginning of the book. Now I, and as most of us know, Nick Groff is no longer part of Ghost Adventures. We all have speculations, we have all talked about it before, we don't know what went down, but what I do know is that in the thank you portion of this book, he is not mentioned at all. Zach mentions in detail Aaron, Billy, Jay, Ashley, Bill Chapel, all of his editing staff, his assistant, his family, everybody, but he does not mention Nick. We can all have our thoughts on that. I'm not going into it because I will just get mad and you all know me when I'm sexy. It's not cute. Well, some of you think it's cute, I'm sure, but... I personally don't think it's cute. I just found it very interesting. He is mentioned in the book as some of the investigations mentioned in the book Nick was a part of, but as far as him thanking him for being, you know, part of this whole situation, at least for the last, up until now, you know, 10 seasons, it's not existent. Which I found really interesting, but not really that surprising because this book was written um, before all of that went down, but then it also wasn't done until I think like right after they came back from Ireland is roughly what I got from this. So like I said, I'm not going to really get into it, but I just found it interesting and I wanted to point it out because I'm a snooper, which actually kind of brings us into our second topic. You're going to see my little lovely papers fall because I was out of sticky tabs. I'm a college kid and I'm not a kid, but I'm a college student and I usually have like those little sticky note thing, tabby things for my books. No, not to be found. So I had to use paper. I had to improvise on the fly. Whatever. Bringing us to our second point, which is chapter two, my crew is my family. Now I'm pinpointing this chapter out because in so many ways, this group is similar to that as we are this crazy 2000 plus member strong family of wackadoodles who have all converged on this little piece of like cyberspace to make each other laugh and build really awesome, memorable, fantastic friendships with people all over the country and the world. And it just shows you that it doesn't matter where you are, you can connect with people who are just like you or who love you for you with a simple click of a button and I think that is amazing. Now a lot of people find it weird like when relationships and friendships and stuff develop on the internet because you always wonder is that who's on the other side of the screen. But 
Once you know that is who it is and you've established that connection, beautiful things can happen and they happen all the time on our fan page. So that crew and is my family. You know, I have really gotten into being a part of this, being an admin, I love it so much. And it just, reading this chapter, always brought me back to that. Just the inside jokes that we all have or that we've developed and the little fun things that we do together and the way that we giggle and banter and the way that we flirt and act like fools is just an amazing, amazing thing that not everybody gets to enjoy. And that is kind of what it's like for the GAC. Zach and his crew are very, very close. He loves all of them. They are all his family. He can trust them and confide in them in all that he does. And chapter two really talks about that and how he expresses his feelings for them in the sense of their friendship and their bond and their brotherhood. And it's just amazing, amazing to read. So yeah, like I said, Zach and his crew are a family just like this crew and me are a family and I love it so much and I would not have it any other way. Moving on to my next point, which is something that we are all readily anticipating. The Demon House. Dun, dun, dun. Zach's new feature length documentary, The Demon House, will be out sometime this fall and it's not coming fast enough. Like I said before, I am scared to death of demons. I think they are evil little urchins, but I am so interested in this story. I remember hearing about this story before Zach even picked it up and did anything with it and I thought, oh my good gravy cow, how does a little boy walk up a freaking wall on his own like that? Oh wait, the devil. Hmm. I was praying somebody would do something with this and then when I found out that Zach of all people had picked it up and was kind of had the rights to it, bought the house in Indiana, was going through with all of this, I got super excited and to hear about the things that happened while they were filming for the Demon House was just solidified the story even more and it just gave me chills and it gave me goosebumps and I could not even, I could barely read the chapter because it was just that chilling. So I can't wait. I know that you guys can't wait for that and it's coming out in fall of this year, which like I said before, not soon enough. This is going to be hands down the biggest well-documented case of paranormal activity, probably in like American history because one, Zach did it, so it's gonna be perfect. But two, because of the credibility of the witnesses and the credibility of the evidence and the things that Zach has seen and witnessed and continues to deal with following the investigation. So it's going to be an interesting ride and I can't wait to jump on the crazy train and take it with him. Moving on to a topic that we all know is a sore, sore subject for me and for Zach. Simply titled Dolls. I hate them. You and me both, brother. You and me both. They are creepy. They are soul stealers. And the reason I picked this chapter is because I just watched that godforsaken movie Annabelle. Oh, hell no. That movie scared the living crapola out of me. I do not recommend anybody watch it unless you want to pee your pants with fright because it was awful. I swear with everything in me that doll was going to come out of that TV and take my soul to the pits of hell with her. I was terrified. If I did not hate dolls before, I sure in the hell hate them now. So Zach, I feel your pain. I sympathize with you. The title of that chapter sums them up. Dolls, I hate them. You and me both. You and me both. And Zach even said in the very first like sentence of this book, it was the hardest chapter for him to write because of his actual act, his absolute fear and hate of these stupid things. I don't blame him. 
Moving on to yet another chapter that is kind of personal to me, but also funny. Um, and we can all kind of go back to memory lane. Now, if we all remember the episode of the Overland Hotel, Zach and the crew had some really interesting things happen. That was when Nick kind of got overtaken by some sort of a spirit and ended up like being down, like put downstairs and he was laying on the floor. And then remember Zach was upstairs and got pushed, like knocked over and everybody was kind of chaotic. Little did we know until I read chapter 19, Overland Hotel, the most painful investigation ever, that Zach had just had surgery on his nose to fix his deviated septum. Now, if you don't know what a deviated septum is, it's that pesky little thing that makes your nose go funk. And it can either sway to the left, to the left or the right, and it can cause you severe breathing problems. I had one, I had it fixed when I was 14, and up until that point, I on a nightly occasion about ran my family out of my house because I snored so loud because I could not breathe and I had sinus problems and so I got it fixed. It's not a pleasant surgery, it sucks, it hurts. It is absolutely awful. Your head feels like it's gonna fall off and when it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall off, you cannot blow your nose for 10 days so it packs in and it's just ugh. So I give Zach so many more props for that investigation because he did that just like days after surgery and every step he took, the pain, and I remember this, shooting up through your face was the worst thing that I have ever felt in my entire life. And I have had children <laughs> without pain medication. And this surgery was worse than that. Just saying. It was absolutely awful. So I feel his pain and so much so that I went back and watched the episode because he talks about in the chapter how he wore like that big hat to cover his face. We, I now know he did that because he was so swollen and packed up from that surgery that he had to do something to try to hide it because he had to trudge on, he had to do it and props to him because that just shows you how much of a professional he really, really is. Oh, I feel your pain, dude. I feel your pain. Bringing us to another chapter that, and kind of the last chapter that I'm going to talk about, which, or one of the last chapters I'm going to talk about, but I really don't need this as a reference anymore, which is Lockdown Hangover. And he talks about how it's worse than a regular one. Now, we've all had a hangover, and it sucks. You wake up the next day and you go, what the hell was I thinking? Because it was all fun and games the night before. Like those 15 tequila shots were a maze fest USA. And then you wake up the next day asleep on the toilet with your head hanging off like the bathtub. And you feel like a jackhammer is like in your brain. And the smell of any sort of food, it's all downhill from there. But from what I've learned, a lockdown hangover is far worse and can last far longer than a typical one. Within 24 hours of a regular hangover, you're typically back to yourself. You're feeling better, maybe a little tired, but with a lockdown hangover, according to Zach, it can last days and even weeks. No, thank you, Sam. Not my idea of a good time. And it makes you really realize the effects that having, um, that doing these investigations long term can have on your body. You think, oh, I'm just going to go talk to a spirit. No, you are using your body as a channel for them to talk to you. Your energy is being sucked out of your body and put into their spirit. You're not meant to do that. <laughs> so the fact that he does that on a daily basis, like a weekly basis for more than one day at a time. Props to him. Because like I said, I've had a real hangover more than once in my lifetime. And I can't even imagine that mess lasting longer than a regular one does. But I learned that it does. And so I have even more respect for him than I did before. Which brings us to our last chapter that I'm going to talk about because it's something that applies to all of us. We are all fans of the Ghost Adventures crew. We are all gaga drooly, or at least some of, most of the girls are all gaga drooly over Zach and how amazingly hot he is, or Aaron, or Billy, or Jay. We're, we're just all gaga drooly over the GAC, and we all love them, and 
think that they're fantastic. With that being said, I'm going to make a PSA statement in my own way. Don't be a crazy fan. Don't be crazy. After reading the chapter crazy fans in this book, I was left shaking my head and rendered speechless. When you have to get a restraining order against a fan because they are like stalking you, that is not okay. He is a human being at the end of the day who brings us entertainment and lives to do so. He loves it. He's in love with the fact of doing his shows and all of his work. But I learned reading that chapter that we as the normal fans, like the ones who would not maul him if they see him. I mean, I know I joke about like pouncing him and leaving my, that's all a good, I would never in my life do anything to harm him in any physical way at all. I would be respectful and be honorable because at the end of the day, he's a person who happens to do a TV show. We can all have our fangirl moments, but when people take fangirl moments way too far and you are hurting yourself or other people, not okay. Not okay. And he had stories in there of a woman jumping out of a van at McDonald's to tell him that his daughter or her daughter had been spiritually impregnated by Zach in her sleep and now they were like carrying his love child. Are you kidding me? In McDonald's. He can't even go eat a Big Mac in peace. That breaks my heart because he talks about how the fans are that are normal, that do give him the respect that he deserves, are missing out on so much because now he's so jaded by not being able to just go outside and be a human being that we are all missing out. So he used to tweet and respond to almost every fan. Every time he could, he would. But they would get so possessive and so obsessed with him that he had to stop and do it in the sporadic way that he does it now. Now, we all know that we are one of the few lucky ones to be acknowledged by him. I mean, I've been retweeted. I know a lot of members have been retweeted. Our group has been mentioned in a comment, which was probably hands down one of the best days of our lives. But at the end of all of that, and at the end of the day, we have to remember that they are people who are trying to have a normal life just like we are. Now they know that being on TV and having a fan base, it crazy comes with the territory. But some of the stories in this book were just, you couldn't make them up. They were just beyond me. And they just made me have like a disappointment in humanity and in people. Because if you have to be the girl who gets a restraining order against you by Zach Bagans because you're crazy. You have issues that you need to work on because it's not that serious. He's a person. So that's all I'm going to say about that because otherwise I'm just going to get ranty and sassy and we're not going to do that. Like I said, it's not cute. But that is all I have for you for my book review with a twist without giving too much away, I hope. I'm still going to put a spoiler alert because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But go buy it. It's like a 14 out of a 10. Just go buy the book. It's the best $24 you will ever spend. And ladies, just remember, you get to look at this face for the rest of your life because you will own it forever. So go buy it or I will hunt you down and I will be a level five stalker because you're missing out all of the questions you ever could have wanted to know about past investigations or personal experiences are in this book go read it now k k <sighs> spiel over i will be back tomorrow for ga flashback friday and i will also be back on monday for ga recap monday where i'm going to be recapping a very much anticipated event Demons in Seattle. I cannot wait to see it. I cannot wait, cannot wait, cannot wait. I'm so excited. I have seen a preview. I have seen promos. I am over the moon, scared out of my mind. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay warm. As always, much love. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.